Hello everyone, welcome to What's In Your Bag. And I am Melissa New with my co-host, Mr. Chase Reynolds of okay. LensRentals.com. How, How are you? Doing good. How are Fabulous. you? Fabulous. Good to have you back. Thank you. And to my right is one of my faves. We're just going to put that out there. Mr. Joel Grimes. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm sick of this like yearly thing where we only hang out once a year. I'm up for increasing that. Okay. Well, I'll talk to your wife. So yeah, well, I know. She'll, she'll We're not that far away now. I know. So. That's awesome. Chase is. He's mm -hmm. in Nashville. Yeah, he's awesome. He's Vegas all, like six times a year. So That's true. That's true. Well, he's with all the hipsters in Nashville. So let's talk about your camera. Okay. Last time you were, you're a big cam Canon guy. Right. I, I've been using Canon for now, I think, over 10 years, yes. Have but you, you upgraded or are you Well, that? yes. I got a call from Rico or Pentex. Okay. And they said, we really need a portrait studio advertising guy okay. to kind of test out a new so camera. So let's hear it. What do you think of Pentax? It's the new uh, 645Z. Yes. It's 51 megapixels. Oh, and, I have no, okay. I've heard about yeah. this. And it, and it really is an amazing camera. Yeah. Now. I wrote on my blog a whole thing about me and format. Is it worth the money? Oh, and yeah. is it really worth, you know, I mean, in terms of um, carrying a bigger camera? It, yeah. yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. And I used medium format for 30 years. The Mimia RBs and then eventually the RZ. They're like sure. the Hasselblad. But it was the 6x7 roll film, 120 roll film mm -hmm. uh, cameras. And that was my main camera for 30 years. Wow. So I would use the 35 on occasion, and I would use 4x5 on occasion, but my main camera was a medium format. When I went and digital came along, I had to give that up. Mm -hmm. And and it took me a long time to get used to shooting that long, narrow, you know, the 35 millimeter format, the long, narrow. Yeah. And at first I was like, ah, oh. And because I was used to a little bit square format. Mm -hmm. um, and then the depth of field is shallower every time you step up the format, good or bad. Right. right? So at the same f-stop, say a full frame at f11, is going to have more depth of field than f11 on a, say, a medium format type system. Good or bad. So the good news is at a 2.8 lens, say a medium format 2.8 lens, is going to look like a 1.4 lens on a 35 millimeter type full frame. Sure. So you get some really soft, you get some, a lot of soft depth of field stuff. And um, so I'm loving it. Now, again, Today, I had three or four people come up, oh, oh I hear you're in the context, you know, and whatever, and oh, that's great, what do you think? And I go, well, it's a great camera, but, you know, and they go, well, you know, I'm thinking about it, and I don't have the money. I go, just keep using what you got. Yeah. So, so Amen. that's, Amen. the thing is, is it's, you've got to justify it if it fits your, well, number one, your pocketbook, mm -hmm. and if it fits your vision as an artist. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I actually like to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I also like, because that's how you started. You well, started yeah. That and point. I also like the idea of throwing things out of focus. Now, I remember when you sent a couple of lenses over to one of my workshops. Mm -hmm. It was the 35 1 2. Mm -hmm. Four, yeah. 1 4. And an 80, you sent an 85 2. I two lenses. 85 1 2. Yeah. And we were, at the workshop, we shot all a bunch of wide open, you know, shallow cool. to feel stuff. Yeah. And it's just the coolest look. I love it. Yeah. And it's, it's not for everything, nope. but it's like it gives you an option. So now what I'm doing is, and this is crazy. You so you didn't, you didn't see my, just like, just get up and so you didn't see, you did not see my presentation this morning with no. Adobe, but in Iceland, and I actually started it before mm -hmm. I'm taking, and I'm doing not just, you can do it on a, any Canon or any camera, but I'm shooting strobing outdoors. So now when you strobe outdoors, you have to overpower the sun. Yes. So you got to use your high sink or whatever your sink is, 200 of a second, mm -hmm. and then you've got to get the strobes that put enough light to overpower the sun, right? So generally speaking, you're going to end up around F16, F22, F-stop. That's kind of cool, right? You get lots of depth of field. Yeah. Been it doing is. that for years. Well, I was teaching a, a workshop, and some, one of the guys came up to me and said, hey, have you ever shot ND filters while you're strobing? I go, nah, I can't do that. And he's like, no, seriously, you, you can get a higher depth of field. And he was trying to explain it to me. Yeah. I go, no, 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 no. I, I go, you can't do that. And he's like, well, let's just try it. And I did it and it worked. So basically what I'm doing is I'm shooting with a six stop or a 10 stop, but mainly six stop in the field, outdoors, having the strobe, put the light on the subject, still getting the background value I want, this value on the subject with it wide open. 
So I don't have to be stuck with a 16 f-stop or a 23 ah. f-stop in the field. So now if you saw some of those images this morning, they're strobed outdoors, but at 2.8. So that gives me another option to do sure. that I couldn't do years ago. And so, you know, it's, it, I'm not the first to do that, yeah. but I'm hoping that as I kind of get it out there and teach it, that more people will start doing it. More people will adopt it. You're constantly evolving. You're constantly pushing yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're pushing yourself. Do you know what I say? I have a passion for the creative process, mm -hmm. okay? So in the end, what that does is that gets you out off the couch, gets you up early while I get up too early. <laughs> but it does get you to battle the elements of, you know, being out in the yeah. field or whatever it is yeah. that, that all the stuff I have to deal with as mm -hmm. photographers. Because I have a passion for the creative process. Cool. That's what drives me. I love so, it. So you can find me, answer your question, Joel, <laughs> Back Grimes, to the Joel Grimes You can find Joel Grimes. That's my main, my, uh, my main website. JoelGrimes.com. Um, yeah. Okay. And then I have my blog, which is all f sorts of stuff on there, uh, articles I write, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's JoelGrimesWorkshops.com. Perfect. And you're very active in social media, so definitely. No, I am not, but my wife is. <laughs> she it's she Joel. takes it is Joel. care of me, <laughs> and and uh, she's built a good following on Facebook and other stuff. So she yeah. really has. She does a good job. But you're very accessible on social media. Yes. Find Joel on his website, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. Yes. Instagram. So you had to check with his wife. I got like five pictures up. That's cool. You're, you're getting somewhere. somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> but also, Joel talked a lot about different equipment. Definitely check out Chase and his team at LensRentals.com. Yes. And do it the Joel Grimes way and pick up a camera and push its limits and really mess with it. I really, I really like your philosophy. Thank so you. I'm going to go home to my boring camera and try to press, you know, push the limits. Good. How about that? I've been inspired by Joel today. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. Thanks, Joel. Thank you.